everyone, Ms. Go Electric here. Happy Labor Day weekend. Today is Sunday, September 1st, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. On Wednesday, Hyundai Motor Company hosted their CEO investor event. They outlined the group's new Hyundai Way strategy with detailed mid and long-term goals. For this new strategy, Hyundai aims to sell 5.55 million vehicles globally by 2030, up by 30% compared to 2023. The company plans to realize 2 million EV sales annually, introducing a full lineup of 21 EV models. During the presentation, it appeared that Hyundai plans to make a production version of the Envision 74 concept, with a slide mentioning it under the High Performance EV Plan. They also plan to introduce extended range electric vehicles, also known as series hybrids for North America and China. The first EREV models will come from Hyundai and Genesis as D-Class SUVs in 2027, with a target of 80,000 plus units per year. They plan to offer 690,000 hybrid units for North America by 2030, which includes launching hybrids for the Genesis brand. They said they'll introduce seven new hybrid models between now and then for a total of 14. Some will be manufactured at Hyundai Motor Group's Meta Plant America in Georgia, alongside dedicated EV models like the Ionic 5 and Ionic 9. The Meta Plant is expected to open earlier than expected this year. Hyundai says they will incorporate a battery cell-to-vehicle structure to improve battery integration and performance, reduce parts, and cut weight by 10% compared to current cell-to-pack systems. They also plan to improve battery chemistry with nickel cobalt manganese and lithium iron phosphate solutions. They said they're working on a more affordable enhanced NCM to be implemented in volume models with battery performance enhancements of at least 20% by 2030. Their future vehicles will feature infotainment systems based on Google's Android Automotive Open Operating System with an app marketplace and AI integration. The operating system will go into production vehicles in the first half of 2026 with the Genesis GV90. Hyundai Motor also said they're developing a zonal electric electronic architecture based on a high-performance vehicle computer for optimized software-defined vehicle devices in terms of power, control, and communication. This architecture is set to debut in the second half of 2026. They also plan to continue to develop their hydrogen and autonomous driving programs in the coming years. Do you think Hyundai is on the right track to keep their status as one of the top EV makers in the U.S.? Back in April, GM announced a joint venture with Samsung SDI for a new battery factory in the U.S. This week, the finer details have finally been released. The 275-hectare site will be located in New Carlisle, Indiana. The companies say the project will add 1,600 jobs to the area and will cost roughly $3.5 billion to complete. The plant will produce prismatic NCA battery cells for GM EVs and is now set to open in 2027 about one year behind their original schedule. The initial production goal is 27 gigawatt hours of cells per year with expansion to 36 gigawatt hours over time. Samsung SDI has a separate relationship with Stellantis for battery production in Illinois and Indiana. The Indiana plant will be GM's fourth battery factory following their Ultium cell facility partnerships with LG Energy Solutions located in Michigan, Ohio, and Tennessee. GM is targeting 168 gigawatt hours of capacity when all four plants are fully scaled up. Another announcement from GM came in regards to their commercial fleet vans. GM has decided to bring the Bright Drop brand under the Chevrolet umbrella instead of keeping it as its own standalone brand. The company says this will allow them to leverage their existing Chevrolet dealer network for sales and service, as well as enhance brand growth opportunities. For the 2025 model year, the vehicles will be called the Chevrolet Bright Drop 400 and Bright Drop 600, and they'll still be built in their Cami assembly plant in Ontario, Canada. Currently, these vans are sold to fleet customers only. Do you think that this could indicate a shift to offer a consumer version? Electra Battery Materials Corporation has been awarded a $20 million grant from the U.S. Department of Defense. This funding is directed towards the completion of Electra's $250 million cobalt sulfate refinery expansion project in Temescaming Shores, Ontario, Canada, just north of Toronto. Previously, they received $5 million in funding from the Canadian government in June for their battery recycling program. 
The project aims to produce 6,500 tons of cobalt sulfate, supporting the production of over 1 million EVs annually. It is poised to become North America's first cobalt sulfate refinery. The U.S. Department of Defense appears to be willing to invest in Canadian operations in order to reduce U.S. dependence on China, which supplies over 80% of the global battery-grade cobalt. Electra says the cobalt feed material will be ethically sourced from Glencore and Eurasia Resources Group mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo. South Korea's LG Energy Solutions has agreed to purchase up to 80% of capacity over the first five years. Several buyers are now competing for the remaining production. Electra also has plans to open a second cobalt refinery plant in Quebec, near supporting battery facilities owned by GM, Ford, BASF, and others. There have been notable personnel changes at Geely's performance electric brand Polestar. Thomas Ingenloth has been the CEO since Polestar's inception seven years ago as its own vehicle brand. He was the head of design at Volvo for 12 years prior to taking the role and brought the brand to market with four models, Polestar 1, 2, 3, and 4. This week, it was reported that Thomas requested to step down as of October 1st. Michael Loescheller will replace Ingenloth as the CEO of Polestar. Loescheller has recent and brief CEO experience with Finfast and Nikola. For nine years prior to that, he was the chief financial officer, board member, and finally the CEO of Stellantis's Opel brand in Europe. He spent eight years with Volkswagen as the global marketing executive and then as the chief financial officer for Volkswagen USA. Before that, he gave four years to Mitsubishi Europe as the CFO. Earlier this month, it was announced that head of design at Polestar, Max Massoni, would depart the brand. I had the opportunity to work directly with he and Thomas on the global launch of the Polestar 2. The two had built a great working relationship together during their years with Volvo and they cooperated closely, defining the brand's aesthetic and mood. Max will be replaced by Philip Ruhlmers, who designed the Audi A3, A6, Q8, e-tron, and e-tron GT. At Volkswagen, Philip contributed to the seventh generation Golf. These moves could be linked to changes in ownership and on the company board. Back in February, Volvo, which had been the second largest stakeholder in Polestar, sold most of its position worth nearly $1 billion. They still hold an 18% stake. In June, former Volvo CEO Hakan Samuelson retired as chairman, and former Volkswagen executive Winfried Volland took over. Company leaders are surely looking for a course correction as Q2 2024 results showed lower sales volume and a 17% reduction in revenue year over year. Do you think Polestar will be headed for brighter days and a plan for success, or do you think that they may be on the path to vanishing from the North American market? Tesla and Rivian each launched new referral programs for the U.S. market this week. Rivian's referral program offers 750 points that can be redeemed in the Rivian Gear Shop or R1 Shop. One point equals one dollar in credit. They are also offering six months of charging at Rivian Adventure Network sites with up to a lifetime limit of three years. Both the referrer and the buyer get these rewards. There is no cap on how many rewards referrers can earn, but the points expire after two years. Rivian says they plan to grow the referral program. If you're interested in buying a Rivian or anything in their gear shop, we hope you'd consider using my referral code that I'll link in the description. Rivian is also inviting the first 100 owners that make 25 qualifying referrals to a special Rivian Adventure Weekend, hosted next year in celebration of their new program. Tesla's look slightly different than it had previously, but now they're offering $500 in credits to referrers, while buyers receive $1,000 off a new Tesla. For referrers, the $500 can be used towards a new vehicle, supercharging, service payments, software upgrades, or merchandise from the Tesla shop. Notably, each referral code is only good to get $1,000 off a new Tesla for the first 10 uses, and buyer benefits are only available when purchasing your first qualifying Tesla product. I guess they don't want another Roadster situation on their hands. Again, if you're looking to purchase a Tesla, we hope you'll use our referral code that we'll link in the description below. Do you think these referral programs will help boost EV demand? Is there a better idea which you think these companies are overlooking? 
If you have found value in this series, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online, subscribing to the Misco Electric channel, and joining us on other social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching episode number 26 of The Current. We've published every weekend for six months, and we hope you'll join us for many more. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.